Okay, Zoom people, are you with me? Okay, so do I have to take my mask off or what? I'm sure my fans will tell me if not. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start off right here with the Municipal Services Committee. Uh, Chairman Ed Long, please proceed, sir. This thing out, there it is. <clears throat> okay, Mayor, what I want to do tonight again is like I did last meeting, if it's all right with you, we may have some folks in the audience that wants to make a comment on something that's not necessarily on the agenda. So I'd like to hold municipal services community input until the end, if that's all right. Yes, sir. That way we can gather up everybody and everything and not have to rehash some things a couple times. Yes, sir. All right, Travis, you're up, brother. Is this the mic you have to push down to or not? No, you're, that one's hot all the time. What about yours? No, this one, yeah. All right, uh, Mayor, City Council, thank you. All the new city council members welcome aboard uh, it's gonna be a fun and exciting ride so uh, today we're here a um, little back history I know we have some new people and just want to give just a little quick history update um, at the end of third or fourth around the third start of the fourth quarter um, we've always been trying to figure out what to do with Cabot Regional Park um, when the Interchange was built there. One of the things is we got the mayor and Maggie here. They were on the Parks Commission. We asked that those funds be, we asked City Council for those funds to go back into that park. And so I believe there was around $160,000 worth of funding that, for that park. So we got with uh, half an associates, uh, who's also done some other things here in the city. And then we also, uh, once they came on board, we got with um, International Mountain Bike Association. They came on and did basically kind of a overview for mountain bike trails within Cabot Regional Park. Um, basically what you have before you is a layout um, and a kind of a budget estimate of where we stand if we started building today. Um, we did have just some kind of shortfalls in 2020 as we all are aware of due to COVID. Um, so, we are here ready to move forward with this project, um, and the Parks Commission approved this project and wanted us to bring it in front of the City Council. Uh, one of the things within this project itself is, um, Mount, I mean, what is proposed today is $1.2 million. That actually can be, be done in multiple stages. The first thing is actually the trail design. That phase is about a $15,000 process. Um, I, I don't know, Sally, yeah, okay, I see her. So uh, Sally Horsey with Half and Associates is on our Zoom call with us here today. Uh, but just a couple of notes within that. Um, you know, we always talk about quality of life. Uh, you know, mountain natural surface trails is one of the fastest growing, not only health benefits that we see in neighborhoods, it's also a huge economic generator within our own towns. Um, Matter of fact, I, I looked at a little study today. For every quarter mile that you live closer to that trail, the home price increases by $15,000 in Northwest Arkansas. They have 133 miles of trails up there that they developed over the last 15 years. It has been a huge thing to what they're doing. Um, the trails that we've kind of, uh, where we would start within this process is you, there's a sheet that says Cabot Arkansas mountain bike trails uh, cost uh, there's about a quarter million dollars there and that is actually the trails themselves I mentioned we had about 160,000 of that uh, there is a recreational trail program that you can apply for in April it is an 80-20 match uh, as far as I know Cabot has not received that I look back in the history they've even I don't even know that they've applied so this is an 80-20 match that we could go after. Therefore, you're looking at getting off the ground with a three-quarter million dollar project with only putting 20% in. So huge uh, step in the right direction. Also, the um, Arkansas Parks and Recreation Foundation, which is funded by the Walton Foundation, has asked also if Cabot is serious about this project, you need to get it to us immediately. So 
very bright future, you start getting some of these other players involved. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, one last thing, um, it was brought to my attention about, you know, that is the old landfill. Sally was actually with Jacobs when they did the uh, EIS study, uh, that level one. Currently, anything that will be impacted is not, had, does not have to do with the landfill. Travis, let me uh, take off on your first statement for some of the, for the new ones, if you don't mind. You said that uh, the North Terminal Interchange, there was some money that came off of that and it was turned back into the park. Let me explain that, if you don't mind. 100%. We were able to sell the shale out there in order to build the approaches to the overpass. Uh, we not only got an overpass out of it, but we ended up making a few dollars off of it by selling the shale and doing a great deal of leveling and rearranging out there. They worked with the city on that, went into the areas where the, Travis wanted them to go. They moved the, the trees off and those kinds of things. So they were a real partner on that, not only in a lot of their preliminary constructions they've done for that, but also by writing a check for us. So that's where that money come from. Uh, is is that and the council was adamant that money turn around and go back into the improvement of that park out there so that's where that money's come from and uh, it was a, it was a good deal for y'all for the city for everybody on that I think uh, anybody got any questions of Travis let's just start at the other end of the table and work our way down if you don't mind James or the other end I'm sorry Stephen Michael. Um, I don't have any questions, Travis, but I would like it maybe if you could just talk about some of the um, amenities and features that will be of the park. I know a lot of it's laid out for us right here in this little bit that you gave us, but I would like to hear maybe some more about what the public could expect on a, a project like this. Okay. Yeah, Michael, no problem. Um, so, and, and I laid a map out there. I know some of you have the iPads and it's hard to see. Um, but it, the trails, mountain bike trails or natural surface trails, some of these will be what they call bilinear trails, means you can go each direction on. And so, um, but it, if you've used like skiing type deal, uh, you know, you have your blues, greens, blacks, um, the trails will be designed within that phase of, you know, difficult level. People bike that, even though it's a hard surface trail. How many people go just to ride that trail? Okay, I'm done now. You already answered my question about the uh, firing range. So, um, this area where the the green open green space practice fields is, I'm assuming that's where the excavation for the shale took place. Is or what? what practice fields are we going to have back there soccer football something well and and i don't necessarily and that was just we just kind of put that in there as just kind of an open area i believe sally you can correct me if i'm wrong uh but and, and it's just just kind of show the space and what it would be to uh that parking lot down there and i believe that four mile creek down there that's probably going to be one of the most things that's probably highly utilized uh, for those people who haven't walked it, I know I saw Joe's here. I'm sure he's walked it a hundred times. But uh, you know that it's it could be pretty picturesque to walk certain times of the year. It was just a curiosity question. You don't you didn't have to give me specifics. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. Can you hear me? Yes, Sally. I was just going to say, yeah, that was just kind of a placeholder for those fields. Um, it hasn't really been programmed, and it just gives Travis a flexibility for once this comes on board, you know, what he needs at that time, what he needs extra fields for. Um, but it is, it's going to be really pretty down by that creek. It's a nice area. Mm -hmm. Mayor Matthew told me about Facebook, just for the people on uh, the streaming services. So the area we're talking about is if you go, it is off the newest interchange, the last Cabot exit headed towards Cersei, I believe that's 21. Uh, just back to the west, it, actually the area is the old Cabot landfill behind 
the street current street shop is where we sit now. It's Willie Ray. Willie Ray Drive. Mm -hmm. It's the Chip and Seal Road that runs back down there. Right. And for all those who are listening as well, uh, uh, I'm on the Metro Plan Board and on the Bicycle uh, Committee for Regional Trails. You know, we've engaged half for this, which the council ap approved. And uh, of course, you all have half. So, of course, we're working together for that connection. And ours will be um, six miles of 12 foot wide uh, concrete that will connect Cabot to Ward. So uh, it's about a three, three point three million dollar project, and we just got the 200 and something thousand dollar grant to do the engineering on it this year, and hopefully we'll get the rest of the grant soon. But Travis, you're saying that like, sorry if I interrupt anybody, um, but you're saying that what y'all are doing here could connect to this trail that he, the mayor just spoke about. Yeah, it'll come across the new bypass. That's where it's going yeah. to come across. And, yeah. and, and, and my goal for Cabot is, is always to have a t full trail system. There's no reason we shouldn't. I mean, but we have, this is a starting point with what um, is going on with that trail the mayor's talking about, plus adding this. There starts to be some connectivity in trying to get over it, and that's one of the things. And the mayor and I talked the other day uh, just about making sure that our new overpasses are pedestrian friendly and then just because since we do have 67 167 mm -hmm. making sure that we can get across those well another another thing we're looking at too is um, Like you said earlier central Arkansas. That's what we want to be considered not Cabot not Ward not Austin not Sherwood not North Rock Just like Fayetteville you say Northwest Arkansas and people go up to the Northwest Arkansas Trail So we're trying to brand ourselves down here. You know, we're all in this together and let's get the, you know, the Central Arkansas, you know, trailway, roadway, whatever you want to call it, um, is what we're, you know, what we're working on. And we've committed $55 million over the next 10 years, Metro Plan has. Yeah, I think that Razorback uh, Greenway Trail took 15 years. And so that's what right. the Metro Plan's mm -hmm. the 10 years, so. I don't have any questions. I am, uh, I did want to say that I'm real impressed with us as a Parks and Rec uh, department, how we're looking at uh, sports and recreation other than just things that are uh, related to a, a ball, a baseball, football, whatever, that we're looking at other things also. And I, this is a, a real good example of it. Thank you, James. I don't think there's any question about what this will do for a community. I think if you have any doubts about it, just look at Northwest Arkansas and see what's going on up there. They literally have companies that uh, that are locating up there simply because of their trail system there's no doubt about it now whether we get that sophisticated or not I don't know but we can certainly start and this in my opinion is an excellent start Travis what do you need from the council next um, there will be a resolution I guess or to go to the full city council meeting yeah and and, and that would just be the resolution just for the council to approve a resolution so um, our next phase would be to get the actual design of the trails and start that process and uh, that way we can go after some of this uh, rtp money come april what are you at he i think he wants to see if you'll forward the legislation to allow this is that not correct correct okay again to allow what Going for, for going for money? No, uh, for uh, for Parks and Rec to move forward with the plan that we have set in front of us. There you go. That's what I wanted to hear. All right. Uh, I don't think that uh, there will be any problem getting that legislation done and ready for us, will there, Ben? You, you're going to have it. It's just going to be a simple resolution, so we're looking at that. All right. Uh, Let's go ahead and make it formal, though. All in I need a motion and a second to move this to full council. I'll make a motion move it to full council. Second. Thank you, Ron and James. I appreciate that. I've got a motion and a second to move to full council. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ed, sir, yes. I th does it have to be a committee member that seconds Ben? Okay, who are our committee members for municipal services? James, Ed. So, I'll, I'll make the second. Would you friendly withdraw your second, Mr. Wimack? Thank you, sir. I'll make a motion to move it to full council. I'll second. 
We got a motion from James, a second from Maggie. Any further discussion? Or I'm sorry, Ed. Did you go ahead? No, go ahead. You're on the horse now. <laughs> I'm just used to saying that. Uh, any other discussion of Ed's committee on this item? Seeing none. All in favor? Can you do the roll call vote, please, Tammy, for their committee? Long. Yes. Reed. Yes. Red. Yes. Cope. Yes. Travis, is there anything else you got on the uh, agenda for the next, say, this quarter on anything that we may need to be aware of now so we can start making plans? Anything that requires legislation. I don't care about any of the inner workings of it. I just want to know if you expect any more legislation from us. Not at this time. We will have, um, for those of you not aware, uh, I guess the public, we did receive our outdoor recreation grant program for the shade structures. Uh, out at Almond Beavis to complete that project. We will have two outdoor pickleball courts that are going over here just to our north, and then also a fitness park at Templeton Park. Um, and we've already started on that process. And uh, but other than that'll be, but that'll be August as far as legislation coming back for that next cycle. Okay. Thanks a bunch. Thank Ma you, Mayor. That concludes my business. Uh, thank you, Ed. And once again, my apologies. Uh, Budget and Personnel Committee, Chairman Matt Weber. To my knowledge, we don't have anything to discuss. Okay. Council, do you have anything to address to Matt? Seeing then we'll hold community input on that till later as we are with municipal services and how we'll do each other committee. Next item, police and fire, James Reed. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm, I'm honored to be uh, on serving on the committee for police and fire. These are our first responders, so they're a big part of our community. I spent time visiting both with uh, Chief Boswell and with Chief Davis, and I'd like to go over just a little bit about where, we, where we're going. Um, this is just a, a thumbnail of the things that we've discussed, and in the paper and on our website, they had the... Uh, uh, the service awards for uh, a number of the firemen and the policemen, but what I wanted to do is just recognize that Chief Davis, uh, Jackie Davis with our police department has been uh, with us for 35 years, almost 36. Uh, so we appreciate that service as well as, uh, I wanted to mention Sergeant Moore, uh, Officer Thompson and Officer Sims and dispatch lead Swift, all serving 10 years. And the thing I wanted to mention about uh, police and fire is there, for, the, for 21, their staffing goals include three new positions, a new lieutenant, which will open up, uh, allow for two new sergeant positions to move up, plus an additional dispatcher. Uh, we're currently short one officer and going through the testing process for hiring. That's both a written and agility test, a background, and a panel interview. So we're trying to get one on board right now. This is uh, according to the governor's recommendations now on training. The state of Arkansas requires 24 hours of continued education on our level. Uh, is that 50 hours is what we're doing right now. So we're training is a very important part of uh, our police department, including and required anti the anti bias training that's required by the governor. Um, Cabot does not employ part time or auxiliary officers. And that was one of the concerns that we saw the governor express because they don't have the uh, the training or the background, nor have they been to the police academy. Um, each officer and supervisor ha all have body cameras as a part of their uniform, and Cabot has a written policy regarding the use of force, specifically banning the chokehold. Uh, Cabot salaries are competitive to other cities of our size, plus they are allowed to take their cruisers home when off shift. In some of your bigger cities, it's they're trading, 
they're bringing the car in and one officer's getting out of it and another officer's getting in, so that car never sets still. Um, but that's kind of a benefit now they can keep their car, keep it cleaned, and keep it serviced. Um, One of the important things is our, our, our salaries. Um, the city has budgeted a $2,000 a year increase for all, all of the fire department, I mean all of the uh, police department, with the exception of a few that are uh, in the higher ranks. So we're starting to see us move up into the range where you're seeing us competitive with a little bit bigger cities. Uh, police department goals for 2021 include becoming certified by the state of Arkansas, fully accredited for procedural standards and facility standards. We've got a new roof that's been replaced and, and are looking at several other facility improvements prior to having the state inspection come in. Uh, future improvements that are not yet funded are replacing some of the handheld two-way radios and some of them are obsolete and it's hard to even get parts for some of those two, those uh, radios uh, and upgrades to computer systems in some of the cruisers. The governor's standards also calls for bilingual campaign um, and Cabot is looking into avail availability of a translator service that can be through the speaker on a cell phone. So if we have an officer that makes a stop and they can't communicate, they can get this translator on the phone and translate right there so that there's no uh, concern about not being able to communicate. I think we've got a great police department and Cabot should be very proud of them. Uh, Chief Davis, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? Sorry, we have a, we have a number of uh, of our firemen, especially in the upper grades, that have been with us for a long time. Uh, just recently, um, recognized for their service was Battalion Chief uh, Camino. Uh, these are all 15 years. Fire Captain Henson, uh, Fire Captain Heineker, Heineker, uh, Fire Engineer uh, Tischler and Fire Captain Tischler. Those are all 15 year services. Uh, and also Fire Engineer Logan for five years. And in 2020, Cabot Fire Department was able to add Fire Marshal Hefner for training and safety division to the ranks. The Fire Marshal currently handles new business plans, uh, continuing fire and life safety inspections. He coordinates company inspections and pre-plans, coordinates fire prevention efforts and public outreach. He monitors safety standards for the department and course investigates all fires and coordinates investigations. So in 2021, our fire department is looking at expanding our part-time program to implement a type of journeyman program. This is a little bit different you have than you've seen. Currently what you see is they hire full-time uh, certified firefighters from other departments to help fill in shifts uh, for vacation or for sickness. This, this year what they've done is they've hired two part-time with the possibility of a third and the great the great thing with these candidates is they want to work full time and they are training them on our system, on how we, um, on our equipment and how we do business here. So they'll be in-house trained there and ready to go to work once we need, if we need to add another fireman to the ranks. Training goals for the department are based on class availability and obviously COVID's had a real impact on that. 2020, we were not able to meet all and maintain our training goals, but we will roll our objectives into 2021 and make an attempt to hit all the objectives this year. Chief Hefner 
uh, is working on an updated revision, revision training schedule with a major focus to continue developing our special ops teams and work to get those members technician level certified within two years. We have a lot of new firefighters and will focus heavily on job knowledge and building the working teams. Rescue One, which is our newest uh, response vehicle, has been in place for six months now. We've been uh, collecting data and analyzing it. It's still being reviewed. The response districts are being reviewed on where we responded to. But with COVID, the whole industry has uh, volume is down. Not near as many people are being called to go to the hospital. But even with that, we're down 30% in this year versus last year. And as you know, we have adjusted our response procedures in an attempt to avoid COVID exposure. In the last six months, it has taken over 31% or 750 calls with that rescue unit. Uh, our maintenance costs are down by 47% and our fuel costs are down by 32%. So there's a significant savings. Uh, but again, with a 30% reduction in call volume, some of this is due to that. Chief Boswell, is there anything else that you'd like to add to that? Thanks a lot. James, you have any legislation? We don't have any legislation, but I thought it would be good just to at least say this is what we're looking at for 2021. I'm glad to uh, that we've got uh, Councilwoman Maggie Cope, Stephen Red on this team, and uh, Brandon. Well, I don't know what I'm going to say in March. You took part of my state of the city. Uh, so, yes, everyone, that's what we've been working on for two years. I greatly appreciate both chiefs and all of our directors. Also, the reason for the promotion opportunities with the police is we're starting our own drug task force. And uh, so we're going to crack down a lot of stuff going on in this town and clean it up and make it better. So um, keep your eyes and ears posted, and we're just trying to do as much as we can to keep your keep you safe. Anything else, James? No, oh, that's all that I have. Okay, uh, community development, Chairman Ed Long. I was, I had the pleasure of serving on the A&P Commission for the last 12 years. Uh, this was my second time on serving on the commission. Uh, the commission has grown from the first time I was on it to where that we literally had to borrow money to be able to do some things to now being able to not only accomplish a lot of projects, but being able to fund a tremendous amount of projects. You did not get any reports in 2019 because of COVID and because the biggest part of the year we were without a permanent chairman. Jay Lula is gonna be here tonight, and I believe he's on Zoom to present the year-end rundown of uh, A&P for 2019. Jay is just a freshly minted chairman. Uh, that happened in December, so be gentle with him. Uh, he, uh, he's been a longtime commissioner, though, so he should be able to uh, uh, answer all your questions you should have tonight. Jay? Um, thank you, Ed. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't make it over there. Um, I just had a surgery, so I'm recovering. So um, does anybody, you have the paper, right? Uh, of uh, the whole year, what we did. Um, if anybody has any questions, I would be more than happy. This is the first time we are doing it. So I really don't know how we present it or what we have to do, Ed, if you can help me out. Well, you kind of give a rundown of what happened last year. You know, I mean, the projects that were funded by uh, A&P, I think the, the, especially the new members would like to know, you know, just a general rundown of what the business was. Okay. Um, like we had, uh, well, Cabot Fest was luckily, well, not luckily, I mean, because of the COVID, 
we didn't spend that much. We spent around 10. Um, the Christmas open house, and then we had the advertising and uh, administrative services, uh, like mainly the events and all that. Uh, Parks and Rec took a big chunk uh, of our budget and Greg is here, uh, Greg Johns, and he is, I mean, he has more detail on the budget or what we have done and what we haven't done for the year. So if you don't mind, uh, I'll pass him the mic so he can do it in detail. Yeah, this is, this is Greg Jones. Just to give a couple of highlights. So the A&P Commission allocated a budget of just over a million dollars. And the actual revenues that came in at about 6,000 more than that, which is just shows how great the cab, people of Cabot are in surrounding areas to support local businesses, even during a pandemic, since we, we brought in more money than we Greg, I think you went out, buddy. But you're back in. Uh, also, in November, Parks and Rec dollars. We, I'm sorry. Oh, I lost it. Can you hear me? Go, go ahead. You faded out to Neverland a while ago, but you're back. Greg, can you hear us? I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. Oh yeah, he's back. Are you there? Yeah. You're back. You were at Parks and Rec and then you got cut off. Can you hear me now? You wanna go without the video maybe, that helps? Well, I tell you what, let me knock this pig in the head right now. Uh, Jay, the, the, the council- Now I'm talking Harry, sorry. All right, you wanna go ahead? Okay, Greg, we'll try you one more time. Go ahead, buddy. All right, so we were able, because we had extra fun through the pandemic and not being able to support some of the other uh, things in our budget, like Strawberry Fest and Cabinet Fest, we were able to fund that request as well as uh, we, in that meeting, we asked Travis, you know, given that the world turned upside down and it really, really affected Parks and Rec, what was his, what was his shortfall for the year? And it was less than $80,000, which is a big tribute to how well Travis and his team has done over at Parks and Rec and continue to do, uh, given the hand they were dealt this year. And they, since that was a budget shortfall of about 79,000, well, a and commission and voted to to fund that request or not really request but to fund that shortfall as well uh to zero out that shortfall so that's kind of the big highlights for for a p this year hey can i speak ed um it looks here you have something for an audit but it didn't look like you paid anything for an audit is it coming later or what Yes, uh, the audit is coming in. Um, they are doing it. They usually run like a couple of months, uh, but uh, they should be in uh, by now. But I mean, it's gonna maybe take them a few months or a few weeks, uh, which we'll follow up and get it on the go. Did y'all do one every two years or every year? I think if I'm not mistaken every year okay I just didn't see anything spent for this year so I just wondered I, I really uh I don't know Ed can know it, since he's there for a longer time that audit was paid for mayor in December of oh, this okay. year I got and, you. Uh, that, you is that is budgeted for this year is what, right. it, is what that budget is Thank but you, there's an audit that is done every year and uh, presented every year and I hope that we've been sending it on to the city. If we haven't, we'll get the city copies for at least the last three or four years. I think it's important the city have those. Okay, thank you, Ed. Anybody got any questions for Jay on this? 
All right, Jay, you've got two new members this year. You're going to have Matt Weber and uh, Stephen Red as uh, the council representatives. The council voted for them at our meeting on the 1st, whenever we organize, that has to be done. Those two members for the council that may not know, there's two members that are uh, statutorily picked by the governing body, and uh, those are the members th this year we serve one year at a time or at the pleasure of the council, whichever comes first. And uh, uh, so if these two want off in next January, they're certainly welcome to do that. If not, well, they can serve on through the remainder of this council and then uh, go from there. The council, the A&P commission itself is self-perpetuating. They choose their own members. They choose their own chairman. There's not a chairman that uh, is gone out and recruited and brought in as chair. The chair is voted on by the members of the commission. So the chair of the commission retains his vote. And there are seven members on that commission. All the members, with the exception of the two that I mentioned and the member at large, which Greg is the member at large this year, have to be from the people that collect the tax, either restaurant owner or hotel owner. So that's how the commission is made up. Uh, it was, I believe, Ben last reorganized in 2005, I believe, is the last ordinance that we done on that to modernize it, bring it over in compliance with some of the attorney the new members of the, of the council should get a hold of Ben and get a copy of that ordinance. It's important that you know what's going on because you will get calls on A&P Commission. Trust me, you will get them. Uh, you need to know how that's done and what goes on with it. Uh, it's, it's a good commission. They try to work. They work hard. This year, like everything else, was kind of in turmoil on it. And uh, still, there was a lot of work done on it. Anybody got any questions at all for Jay? And Ed, the way I understand it, um, since the council approved ordinance one, that's good enough to put those two people in there. Because in the past, I think we did an ordinance per person, but we didn't have to. No, they, they are organized under ordinance one as part okay. of the council organization. There's no other legislation needed on that. They're there. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, Jay, this year the council has requested that we have either the chairman of the commissions are a, they're a representative at every uh, council meeting, and I believe that was decided. Matt, you were the sponsor of that or the key behind that. The work session is good enough, correct? Yes, but you had stated that it was only required for them to be here quarterly. They're required every quarter so, to make a written or yeah. a report like what Jay needs to make. They mm -hmm. still need to be present here. I've, yeah, if, I've if, totally, completely rethought that, and I think they need to be present like every other commission, but they will still be required to make their report every quarter. If we're going to require I, the other commissions to be here, it's fair for them to. I think that would be great. I mean, if it's an open invitation requesting you to be here, uh, if anyone has any questions, whether it's council or the community, uh, I think that would be wonderful. Do you question the... Ed and Matt, do you want them at the work session or work session and council meeting? No, just work session. Just one time is all they need to do. And I think the work sessions are, are informal enough that I believe that more information can be shared at those than probably at the council meeting. That's just my opinion. Ben, would you care to send an email out to all the commissions and let them know either the chairman or one of the members to represent them should be at every work session meeting? Thanks, sir. Ben, make sure that the chair understands that whoever they send needs to be capable of answering the questions and answering for the commission. So uh, that's all I've got on it. If anybody's got anything else, let's entertain that mayor. If not, I'm, I'm ready to move forward. Okay. Ben, on one, uh, if I could add one yes, other thing. Uh, planning commission, it does not come usually before in the workshop. In, uh, okay. We, we, okay. But the legislation we look at, will they be here? Very good. Okay, anybody else for community development? Ed has nothing else. Any other of the members? 
Okay. Uh, Military Committee Chairman Ron Waymack. Nothing reported this time, Mayor. Thank you, Ron. Um, okay, now we're going to go to general community input. So if you have a question for any of the committee stuff or just something in general, uh, you may come up to the front. We should have a piece of paper up there. Is it up there? Okay. Aunt Tammy said it was. You just state your name. You don't have to state your address for the record. Just write your name and address on there uh, so we keep it confidential. We just have to put it in the minutes. Um, so if you do have something, please come up, wipe the mic, and um, sign the paper. Looks like we have no takers tonight. Uh, after we adjourn here, we still have a regular city council meeting to do that uh, has one item. So can I get a motion to adjourn the work session? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a motion from Ed, a second from Stephen. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Adjourned at uh, 715. Roger, you want me to keep recording this or shut it down? Okay. Is everybody ready? Okay, uh, it is 7.15 still. We'll call the uh, regular city council meeting to order. Uh, first item is roll call. Tammy. Long. Jones. Here. Red. Here. Hillenberg. Here. Cope. Here. Reed. Here. Weber. Here. Waymack. Here. And I apologize for some reason the uh, Prayer and the pledge is on here, but we need to do that. So, uh, do we need to amend the agenda for that, or can we just go ahead and do it? Okay. If everyone would please stand, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for being a part of our lives and being a part of Cabot, Arkansas. Father, we uh, ask for your wisdom and guidance as we make decisions on behalf of the city and what's best for all of its citizens. Please guide and protect us. Please forgive us our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you'd repeat after me, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Thank you, everybody. You may be seated. Can I get a motion to read ordinances and resolutions by title only? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we read ordinances and resolutions by title only. Second. Thank you, James. Got a motion from James, a second by Matt, to read ordinances and resolutions by title only. Any discussion? Seeing none. Roll call vote, please, Tammy. Long. Here. Jones. Yes. Red. Yes. Hillenberg. Yes. Cope. Yes. Reed. Yes. Weber. Yes. Waymack. Yes. Thank you, Tammy. Passes 8 0. Uh, we only have one item of City Council new business that I know of. Ordinance number two of 2021. Tammy. Ordinance number two of 2021, an ordinance to permit Brandon Hillenberg and Hillenberg Heat and Air to do business with the City of Cabot, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. First reading. Thank you, Tammy. Do I get any action? Make a motion to spend second, third reading. Second. I got a motion from Ed, a second by James to suspend the second and third reading, the ordinance number two of 2021. Any discussion? So this is just because there is already a contract between his company and the city. It's nothing new that's come up. It's just something that's already in the works. This is just to cover us. Yes, sir. Now that he's elected, uh, the contract ends uh, March 
of 2021 and we've already discussed that we will be rebidding it again as in a sealed bid like we did last time sealed bid so if i want just for the record that uh, the 31st of this year when the contract expires hillenburg will not be rebidding the city's work just for transparency's sake and uh, we just want to fulfill the current contract as the mayor said on the 31st of this uh, in march um, but with that being said, Mayor, I'd like to excuse myself uh, from this vote. Of course. If you just take a seat out there, that'd be wonderful. Okay, we got a motion to waive the second and third reading. Any more discussions? So just to clarify, um, based off of what we were provided here, March 30th of 2020, the city entered an agreement with Brandenburg Hilling, Han sorry, Hillenburg Heat and Air to, um, to for these um, HVAC services. That was an agreement that was made prior to when Brandon was elected. Therefore, to make, to make the finishing of this contract legal, we have to pass this ordinance because legally you cannot serve on the council land. That's correct. Like we do business done in the, the past with Eddie Cook, who was director of operations, who did T-shirts, with Rick Prentice, who right. sold trucks, with um, some of the firemen who do stuff for the city. Right. It's just it's just a law. Right. Cl clarification. This is just to get to the end of the agreement, and at the end of yes, the at the end of the agreement, which is March 31st of this year, 2021, so just three months from now, the yes. city will be rebidding. Well, we're going to rebid before that because we got to yeah. have someone in place by then. True. Yes. Okay. Just wanted a clarification for everyone. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? See none. All in favor, roll call vote, please, Tammy. Red. Yes. Cope. Yes. Reed. Yes. Weber. Yes. Waymack. Long. Yes. Jones. Yes. Passes 7-0. Mayor, I make a motion that we accept ordinance number two of 2021. Second. I got a motion from James, a second from Matt to adopt ordinance number two of 2021. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, roll call vote, please. Tammy. Red. Yes. Cope. Yes. Reed? Yes. Weber? Yes. Waymack? No. Long? Yes. Jones? Yes. Passes 6 1. Mayor, is the emergency clause required? If it's so, I would make a motion that we extend the emergency clause. Thank you, sir. I got a motion from James, a second from. I'll second it, Mayor. Second from Ed to um, adopt the merchant clause for ordinance number two of 2021. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, roll call vote, please, Tammy. Red. Yes. Cope. Yes. Reed. Yes. Weber. Yes. Waymack. No. Long. Yes. Jones. Yes. Passes 6 1. Uh, next item, do we have any other new business? Seeing none, we're going to community input again. If anything's come to light that you want to talk about, please um, approach the podium. Discuss our next regular scheduled meeting is on a holiday, um, so it's kind of up to you guys. Occasionally, we move it back a day and do it on Tuesday, or we push it back a full week. However, we are in that situation. It's, it's, it's probably be preferable to decide it here and now, so we can announce it to the public. Yeah, because the next meeting is Ordinance 41 of 2020, and we have a lot of uh, people that want to talk about that one. I got uh, eight emails today and a text, plus all the other ones I've gotten in the past. So uh, it's a hot topic. 
Mayor, is there like a, I know that I'm, I'm a big calendar person and so I've written out all the meetings because I have a lot of things going on. And I see that we have about four conflicts coming up this year with meetings being on holidays. Is there any way that we can just set that at the beginning of the year? Like we know that that's a holiday, like and go ahead and set those and get those out instead of doing it the same month of? Yeah, what we usually do, Maggie, is it's the next day on Tuesday, but with COVID, we're in this building and Parks and Rec needs this building for that day. So um, that's what kind of threw a kink in our plans um, because, you know, we all have to share the big space now. If it was just a city annex, we could go ahead and do it for sure. But I, I agree. I got a lot on my calendar, too. Um, I guess Tuesday's out for sure, Travis. So we'd be looking at the next Monday or Tuesday. If you all look at your calendars the uh, 25th or 26th. I'll make a motion, move it to the 25th. Keep the 26th planning? Okay, it has to be the 25th then. Is everybody good with the 25th or we need to do something else? Sir, how about down this way? 25th? Okay, what's our next conflict, Maggie? Do you know? Is that the 16th? Or the 9th? Can't remember. 15th? 15th is the day off. Okay. I'm definitely okay with the sixth on that one. But it's up to you guys. I don't know if you're going to take vacation. That's what will get us on that one. If anybody's taking vacation, which we don't know if COVID's going to allow us. Well, let's do the first one first. Thanks for bringing that up. So February 15th, Travis is the Parks and Rec on the 16th. So we'd have to move it to the 22nd. Is the 22nd okay with everybody? Ed, you good? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, now. Well, we changed both meetings to 630 this year, so hopefully we got you covered. And then you said the next one, Matt, is July? July 4th. So do you want to do it the 6th or do it the 12th? I, yeah, I don't have any vacation plans, but I know if people do get to vacation, that's a big vacationing a big week. Yep. What do y'all think? <laughs> I'm just saying... We could all get one maybe this year. Y'all good with it? Do you want the 6th or the 12th? The 6th. Okay. I'd say the 6th. And what's the last one, Matt? So Labor Day, we used to do the Tuesday after. So who has a calendar? What day is that then? September the 6th. That'd be the 7th. The 7th. On. Okay. So the 6th, change to the 7th. And does anybody want to change Christmas or we'll just play that in my ear? No, we're not changing the meeting. Before have, we have the authority to change Christmas? <laughs> well, well we, change Halloween. Ha we change Halloween every year, so. Yeah. They always call up the city hall and want to change Halloween. So, Mayor, the Christmas is not till Saturday of that week, so okay, we should have. I think we're okay then. Okay, good deal. All right, there's the four dates. Anything else? Ben, do you know of anything else? 
I do. Um, Go ahead. Matthew, uh, the Municipal League Convention is this month. It's virtual. It's the starts the 15th, 16th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. I was as completely wrong on that as I've ever been in my life. Uh, I think maybe, don't you still have that mailer that's how they sign up for it? send it back to the old ones that some of us may have lost it just asking for a friend James that will all that will start your uh, any of you that are interested in doing it that will start your continuing ed they will have one or two classes during that meeting that will qualify for continuing ed and then the rest of continuing ed will be online this year as well I don't think they're planning on changing anything that worked so well last year well, I think that's probably going to be their mode of operation this year. I'd really encourage that. It's a, it's a, it's a great organization, and it's a, it's a great program, and they really do have some meaty stuff, don't they, Mayor? They really do. Anyone else? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? Got a motion to adjourn. Is that how it works? I'm yep. Okay. Michael gave us a motion journey. Any second? I second. Second from Brandon. All in favor, say aye. 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 Adjourned at 730. Thanks, everybody, for coming out.